Hey guys, Dwayne Estes here, Executive Director of the Southeastern Grasslands Initiative. It might look like I'm laying down on the side of the interstate. Well, not quite, but I'm here at exit 40 of Interstate 40, just outside Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, right behind me, you can see this lovely short yellow plant and the uh, interstate exit ramp is immediately behind me there. Uh, back over to this side, you've got Interstate 24 coming by. And uh, here's the uh, exit 40 interchange. So we got this major thoroughfare, right? People travel this, there are millions and millions of passengers that, that travel this interstate system yearly. And one of the things that we need to acknowledge is that these original roads that, that came through this area, the interstate, uh, in many cases, in many areas, was built upon previous highway systems. Those highway systems were built upon previous settler trails that were used for wagons and horse trails. Those wagon and horse trails were built upon previous Native American trails. And those Native American trails for this region of Tennessee, Kentucky, and Alabama, and Georgia, and Virginia, were previously built on the trails of animals like bison and elk and the mammoths and mastodons before them. So some of these thoroughfares for travel really date back millennia, if not millions of years through the course of time. And right here we have a great example of how we can kind of begin to piece together animal conservation and rare plant conservation. This little yellow plant that I'm looking at is called a bladder pod. And it's a type of uh, little yellow mustard Let's take a look. It's got four little yellow petals there, and it will form a fruit that is uh, called a silicle. And it's a, a little bitty short pod with a couple of seeds in it. And bladder pods are pretty much only found in Tennessee, a uh, little bit of Alabama, and there's a couple species over in Oklahoma, Texas. But here in Tennessee, they always grow in these very short, statured, open habitats. What that means is this species is incapable of thriving in a forest. But if you were to look all around the Nashville area, like on the hills across from me, what you see are forested hills. That's what most people think early Nashville was like. But this plant is a testament to the fact that there had to have been open habitats here. Why? This plant's only found in Tennessee and one site in Kentucky, nowhere else in the world. And it's always found in the valley of the Cumberland River and some of its major tributaries. Today, you don't find this in natural habitats, or not what we would deem to be natural. You find it here along this interstate uh, road shelter. You can see the yellow spreading out. You might find it in cornfields or bottomlands, um, roadside gravels. But it's somewhat of an enigma because people today really are having a hard time of thinking about, well, what was the natural habitat for this bladder pod. I didn't give you the scientific name either, by the way. It's called Paysonia lescuria. It used to be Lescarella lescuria. So we think now that emerging evidence suggests that this region around Nashville was once very open, that it had natural glades that are sort of rocky limestone glades. But guess what? This thing does not grow in rocky limestone glades. So looking at Revolutionary War land grant data of these early maps, we begin to see that there was a lot of open landscapes here in the Nashville area in the 1780s, 1770s. In fact, the very first um, sort of English speaking white settlers that came to this area in the 1760s and 1770s, they did so, they were the long hunters. They came here to hunt bison. So we think that this bladder pod and the other bladder pod species that grow in Middle Tennessee are largely a holdover or an artifact of these former bison grazed meadows. Imagine a herd of bison coming through here. They're gnawing this stuff down nice and close and sort of cropping it close. And this is basically a type of short grass prairie, if you will, that's found here in Tennessee. Uh, this plant, which is an annual, has to have frequent disturbance. So things like bison wallows or that really close grazing to where it exposes uh, pockets of bare soil down there to where those seeds can germinate, all those are really critical for bladder pods. In fact, this plant is also heavily tied to agricultural fields today. If a field goes fallow and is allowed to revert to a thicket or uh, planted in fescue, 
the bladder pile will disappear. But if the farmer plows that field at the right time of year, the bladder pod goes crazy. So we think that this plant is closely tied to natural disturbance. And the, the thing that most likely makes sense is bison grazing. And before that, there was probably a gap of a few thousand years where this plant was trying to hold on the best that it could. But if you go back to the early Holocene and late Pleistocene, the ice ages, we would have had a ton of big animals around here. Uh, native horses, camels, uh, rhinoceros. Uh, we're talking about um, uh, multiple species of bison the farther back in time you go. So anyways, I'm going on and on, but here's what I want to end with. The bladder pods of the Nashville Basin area of Central Tennessee and North Alabama very likely are tied to a long history that dates back thousands, if not millions of years, to big grazing megafauna like bison. We don't really think these are um, dependent on fire because most of the places that we see these are really, really moist habitats where fire doesn't really make sense to be part of the equation. So big animals, rare plants, local history, it all ties together. Thank you guys for your time. Continue to follow the Southeastern Grasslands Initiative. We appreciate all your time and your attention. Thank you.